Well, welcome. If you haven't already guessed, it is Palm Sunday. And I got a few palms. And uh, we hope that you uh, were able to pick up your palm froms yourself from the church. Because uh, you might need them a little bit later in the worship. Uh, we have a little bit of um, fun. Well, we're going to try and have with these. So, And if you don't have them right now... There's some available, uh, and uh, you can pick them up down outside the church building in our lower uh, entrance there uh, sometime this week if uh, what we do a little bit later with them is of interest to you. Uh, but welcome to worship here at Newtown Congregational Church on this Palm and Passion Sunday. We're going to start with palms, and we're going to share the story of the Passion narrative as we prepare to enter this holiest of weeks for Christians. And we're glad that you are with us for this. We have a few other announcements we want to call your attention to uh, and hopefully um, to help you as we all journey through this week. The first announcement is that we will be having an online Monday Thursday offering of worship of Tenebrae and communion. Uh, and you're welcome to join us at, at 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday night. Uh, tune in to Facebook and YouTube, uh, and we'll share in that the telling of the story, the lighting of candles, the snuffing out, and moving into darkness, as well as sharing communion. So if you're able to bring uh, elements of bread in the cup with you uh, as you join us in worship online. Also then, on Easter morning, we have a couple of offerings. The first is 6.30 a.m. We are going to have an Easter sunrise service in person up on the top of Castle Hill. Again, that's 6.30 a.m. We ask that you do wear masks, that you physically distance in your household groups um, so that we can maintain a level of safety. But uh, it will be an opportunity for us to welcome 
Easter morning and to celebrate the power of the resurrection and of God's Spirit at work in our lives. Then at 10 a.m. on these two channels, our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook channel, we will be having a powerful, hopefully, and wonderful Easter worship celebration with brass and with a message about Easter and a celebration of God's answer to death and destruction, God's answer which is love and new life and joy that endures in the midst of all things. So we hope that you'll join us uh, as we journey this week and celebrate Easter next Sunday. Also, uh, we want to let you know that uh, the uh, building reopening team, the COVID response team, has been looking at the numbers and looking at vaccinations, and um, we are uh, very excited that we think we have the opportunity in the coming months to begin to reopen to in-person worship um, as hopefully the numbers continue to unfold. We're going to be monitoring those numbers, but it looks like um, starting in May we will be having some in-person offerings on Sunday mornings uh, and then moving into the summer, uh, blending more and more in-person worship with our online offerings. So do look for more information about that uh, in the coming days and weeks uh, as we um, as we transition. I always said at the beginning of this, more than likely as we move into this new time of transition, that it would be more like a dimmer switch, you know, where we turn on, it's not gonna be like a light switch, where we just say, oh, everything's great, we just turn it on. Uh, and there will probably be some caveats, we have to ask some people to, to wear masks and do some other things as part of our worship when we gather together. But we are excited that we are able to be together uh, on Sunday mornings in worship in, in ways that hopefully will be um, sustaining, uh, even while we'll continue to offer online um, experiences for folks that are either um, unable to join us or still have concerns, which uh, are very well founded for many folks. So we, we want to continue to make sure that we're trying to meet uh, the needs of all of us and also provide care uh, and compassion and love, lead with love as we continue this journey through this time of pandemic. There are a number of other uh, announcements that have been sent out via email. We want to remind you that today uh, is the day to, that we're celebrating the uh, pledges that we have received um, and uh, dedicating and consecrating the pledges for our uh, annual budget uh, for the coming year. If for some reason you haven't had a chance to send in your pledge, you can do that right now. You can go online and just make your pledge right then and there or find that uh, brochure that we had sent out in the mail and fill it out and put an envelope, put it in the envelope that was with it and put a stamp on it and make sure you send it out. And we'll be consecrating a little bit later in our service all of uh, those gifts and pledges. And we just hope that we can... Uh, uh, include yours, and we're so grateful for everyone who, who has pledged and uh, who is making uh, support of this congregation and its ministries, especially during this time of challenge. Um, your support has made all the difference to us. Those are our announcements today. We are going to now continue with a time of worship. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road 
while others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the in son the of highest. David. Blessed, Blessed is, is the one who comes in the name of the, name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, son Hosanna of David. In the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? This is, this is Jesus, Jesus, the, the prophet, prophet from, from Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee. Galilee. Good morning, NCC, and happy Palm Sunday. As many of you know, I was working in the church office this week, and it was because we are all trying, your church staff and, and everyone who volunteers at church is trying to get ready for Holy Week. And here's the thing about Holy Week. Holy Week begins today because today is Palm Sunday. Now, Holy Week is, um, it, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is the holiest week of the entire church year. And so if you stopped by the church this week and you came in to see me, you left with a special NCC Holy Week bag. Um, and so because Holy Week is a journey, there are, there's everything that you need for your Holy Week journey in this bag. Special thanks to um, Kara and John McFadden for letting me use their bag as a demonstration this week. And so you have your palms for Palm Sunday. You have your communion elements for Maundy Thursday. And I hope that you will tune into our church service at 7 p.m. that evening. You have a nature walk for Good Friday and a special devotional for Holy Saturday. And of course, if you've gone through your bag, you've seen that there is a special Easter Sunday surprise inside your bag. Now, here's the thing. If you did not pick up a Holy Week bag from NCC this week, there's no reason why you can't have a good Holy Week too. And maybe that looks like chopping an evergreen branch off a tree and using it as a palm this morning and getting your favorite elements to use for communion for Maundy Thursday and finding ways to make your Good Friday and Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday special. This is just the start of the most important journey 
that you will make during the entire church year this year. And so I hope that you are excited. I hope that you are ready to celebrate and to love one another and to grieve and then celebrate again on Easter. And most of all, I hope that it is a special week for you. And so to make your Palm Sunday extra special, we have a special guest who will show us how to turn these palm fronds into crosses. And you know what? I'm so glad that they're going to show us because I don't even know how to do it. And so stay tuned for our spe for a special Palm Sunday message this morning. Happy Palm Sunday, everyone. So since we all can't be together, I thought I'd make a little tutorial on how to make a cross from your palm in 72 easy steps. So here we go. Okay, so first we start with our palm frond. And you'll probably want to go about five inches up and we will fold it down. So this is going to be the start of our cross. Then you will come down and make a 45 degree bend. I usually go about a thumb to thumb and a half thickness down from the top. And this is going to be the start of our cross. You will then come back across the front. So you can see now we are starting to get our cross shape. And then bring it back. So here we have our cross. And it has started. Now we need to do our wrapping. So this is not where I bust into rhymes. We're going to do another 45 degree bend right in the center. So you will have a 45 degree bend that's going to the right. And when you're coming back from the left hand side, another 45 degree bend. And you will then go around and we will cross the front. You'll come up the back side and then cross again. So we then have an X or a crisscross on the front of our palm cross. After you've made that one X, we then come up vertically. So we have a vertical portion come around the back and come down and that will then kind of finish off nicely with two little vertical pieces on either side to hold your cross brace there in the middle. Now once you have done that you have the tail, the very top of your palm and then you can either wrap it once or twice around one of the pieces on the back. Sorry for my hands being in the way. We'll wrap it around once or twice and voila, you now have, sorry about that little piece hanging there. You now have a lovely woven palm cross. And it wasn't 72 easy steps, it was about seven. As we move into a time of pastoral prayer this morning, we take a moment to acknowledge all of the prayer requests that you have shared with us, all of the opportunities that you have given us to pray for you and, and to share your prayers with one another and of course to share them with God. And so we take all of those prayers, we hold them and we bless them and we hold them in our hearts and we share them with God as we offer them with our own prayers this morning during a time of prayer. And so friends, will you pray with me? Jesus, you set your face towards Jerusalem and walked alongside those who suffer. Be our vision that we too may walk the way of compassion and extend a hand to those around us who are suffering in sickness and grief. 
during this unthinkable Holy Week. God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. God, you stopped to heal the sick and tend to those broken in mind and body in spirit. Be our vision that we too may do everything that you call us to do. God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Jesus, you said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Be our vision that we too may work toward your realm where the marginalized and oppressed will be raised up and know that they are indeed beloved children of the holy. God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Jesus, you took the time to pray and to be silent. And so we offer the silent prayers of our hearts to you now. Be our vision that through our prayers, meditation, and reflection, we may draw closer to you and find our way on this journey of faith. God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Jesus, you entered Jerusalem with peace in your heart, even though danger was all around you. Be our vision that we too can live as people of peace in the face that all that is causing us fear this day. May we hold your vision of the perfect love which casts out all fear ever before us. God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Bless us, O blessed one, as we enter into the days ahead of us. We will need your power and presence to sustain us as we move through these difficult days together. Spirit of love and life, stay close to us. These and all the prayers of our hearts we offer in faith as we pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The word Hosanna is a complicated and multifaceted word. The word Hosanna itself is a Hebrew word that has been translated into Greek, Aramaic, Latin, and of course, English. And the word Hosanna, it has two different meanings. In Psalm 118, we see that the word Hosanna means help us, save us, God. And in the Christian scriptures, we see that it is a celebration word used at Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. You know, stewardship is a lot like the word Hosanna. During our annual stewardship drive, we ask you to help us, save us even, because without you, it would be impossible to sustain this church and this community. We need financial comp contributions. And we also celebrate the abundance of our community and we recognize that the spiritual discipline of giving is hard work. And those gifts that we receive um, help us do things like maintain our building and send 
50 Easter baskets um, from our church to Bridgeport Rescue Mission, for example, and um, and help us help us remain the church until we are able to meet in person again. Today marks the end of our stewardship drive, but if you haven't gotten around to sending in your pledge, there is still time. You can send your 2021 through 2022 pledges to us through our website or via the mail, and you can send your regular 2020 through 2021 pledges through the website and the mail, as well as any special gifts or donations that you may feel called to make this week in anticipation of Holy Week and Easter and the beyond. And so let us consecrate our 2021 through 2022 stewardship drive as a church. Friends, will you pray with me? Generous God, you made us in your image and breathed in us a spirit of generosity that is both gift and response. Thank you for moving us to give as we have received, abundantly, generously, and joyfully, that our common ministry may ever bear witness to your unfailing grace. In the name of the three in whom we are one, amen. <laughs>know that this week as we move into it this week is a time to remember
the passion of Jesus. The passion of him facing the powerful and potent forces of death, of fear. And so we're going to now move into a time of retelling the passion narrative. And we're so pleased that we have um, our crack team of filmmakers that have been working hard, uh, blending the story together for you. And uh, we think, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, I don't think they have anything upon this production team that works hard to share this story with you. Now, I don't know if we'll get any Oscars for this, but now let's move into this story, this potent story that helps us to embrace the power and the joy of Easter because we recognize the way in which this journey does take us to places of darkness, of death, of fear, and allows the power of God's love to embrace all of us even in those moments so that when we announce that Christ is risen, we can indeed be a people of great, great joy. It was the day before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted? It could have been sold for a lot of money and the money given to the poor. Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him after one another, Surely not I. Surely not I. Surely not I. Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, 
one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them. Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the realm of God, which knows no end. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Even though all became deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. They laid hands on him and arrested him, but one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put away your sword. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. They took him first to Annas. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Annas questioned Jesus, and Jesus answered, I have always spoken publicly to everyone. All my teaching was done in the synagogues and in the temple, where all the people come together. I have never said anything in secret. Why then do you question me? Question the people who heard me. Ask them what I told them. They know what I said. How dare you talk like that to the high priest? If I have said anything wrong, tell everyone here what it was. But if I am right in what I have said, why do you hit me? Then Annas sent him to Caiaphas the high priest, where all the chief priests the elders, and the teachers of the law were gathering. Peter followed from a distance and went into the courtyard of the high priest's house. There he sat down with the guards, keeping himself warm by the fire. The chief priests and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they could not find any. Many witnesses told lies against Jesus, but their stories did not agree. Then some men stood up and told this lie against Jesus. We heard him say, I will tear down this temple which men have made, and after three days I will build one that is not made by men. Not even they, however, could make their stories agree. Caiaphas, the high priest, stood up in front of all of them and questioned Jesus. Have you no answer to the accusation they bring against you? But Jesus kept quiet and would not say a word. Again, the high priest questioned him. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed God? I am, and you will all see the Son of Man seated at the right side of the Almighty and coming with the clouds of heaven. We don't need any more witnesses. You heard his blasphemy. People, what is your decision? Guilty! 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 Some of them began to spit on Jesus, and they blindfolded him, hit him, and taunted him, saying, Guess who hit you? Guess who hit you? Guess who, Guess who hit you? Guess who hit you? Guess who hit you? And the guards took him, and slapped him. Early in the morning, the chief priests met hurriedly with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole council, and made their plans. They put Jesus in chains, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And the crowds began. 
He's no king. Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. I find no crime in this man. Agitator, 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 agitator! When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him, then arraying him in gorgeous clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day. Before this, they had been arguing with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people. And he said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore whip him and release him. Give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city, and for murder, Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but the crowd shouted out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Why? Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no crime deserving death. I will have him whipped and release him. Crucify! 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 And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they had asked for. But Jesus, he delivered up to their will. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place which is called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed, saying, Save yourself! Save yourself! Save yourself! The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us! Do you not fear God? You and I are under the same condemnation, and rightly so. We're receiving what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come in your power, which knows no end. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about twelve o'clock noon, and there was darkness over the whole land until three o'clock while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, Surely this man was the Son of God. Danced on the 
Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped, they stripped, they hung me on high. They left me there on a cross to die. Dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I lead you all wherever you may be. has danced into our world and danced into our lives. And on this day, blessed is the one who comes by the way of love, poured out with abandoned. Blessed is the one who walks toward us by the way of grace that holds us fast. Blessed is the one who calls us to follow in the way of blessing and in the path of joy. How swiftly things changed back then, long ago. How swiftly we too can be distracted. How swiftly we too can give in to the way of fear and death and believe in the love of power more than the power of love. And yet, may we hold fast to Christ's vision of goodness Peace from the practice of justice. Equality from the practice of respect. And as this coming week unfolds, let us commit ourselves to be overtaken by God's gracious love. And let us pour that love back into the world. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Holy One look upon you with all kindness and give you peace. Amen.